Hello, welcome back. This video I'm going to be going on a little rant about not neglecting the small things. Uh, before I get into that, make sure you check out my Patreon. Link is down below. Uh, you can get access to my new raw power building template. I release a four week template on the first of every month and it only costs five dollars. So once again, links down below. Make sure you check it out. Thanks. So recently one of my clients, uh, he was skipping his bird dogs and his dead bugs and that sparked this video idea. So you really don't want to skip the small things. Uh, you know, they might look pretty meaningless in the program. They might seem like they're boring and really serve no purpose, but usually these little things serve huge roles. One example of how, you know, little things like bird dogs and dead bugs can play a big role in the big picture of your whole training program is they're very useful for having a rigid torso because they teach you how to move your limbs without moving your pelvis and your rib cage. You know, if you keep those two things still, your back will stay flat on the floor while you are, you know, moving your arms and your legs as you do in the bird dog and dead bug. Once you get good at bird dogs and dead bugs, it really transfers over to the squat and deadlift and teaches you how to keep your rib cage and your pelvis in a proper position in order to maintain a neutral spinal position. And that's going to go a long way towards uh, keeping you safe and free from back injury. Now, another thing that I see a lot of people skip is the warm-up circuits, you know, or any kind of movement prep work. So uh, a really good way that I like to train it is, you know, doing some uh, deep dumbbell pressing, uh, some single arm rowing, uh, a little bit of tricep work to get blood in the elbows, and last but not least, uh, rotator cuff work just to get the shoulder girdle warmed up. And... A lot of people are going to skip these and go right into the barbell work. You know, at least hopefully they're starting with the barbell, you know, instead of 135. But anyways, going back to the main point here, um, doing these warm-up circuits is going to help activate your key muscles and get you prepared to do the primary work that is to follow. So on to the third thing that might seem pointless but actually plays a pretty big role is doing isometric holds. This is going to build up stability and teach you how to stay tight. Some of my favorite isometric holds are uh, with a band pull apart and just holding it at the end or uh, doing a single arm face pull, holding it at the end. Ones that carry over very well to the big lifts, uh, say you're doing a isometric pin press where you have the pins set somewhere in the mid range and you know you have the bar on your chest and you press it into those pins as hard as you can. You know, Generally with an isometric hold you're going to want to hold it anywhere from probably 8 to 20 seconds at the most. And then on the squat and the deadlift, you actually can do the same thing. So you set the pin somewhere in the mid-range. Um, on deadlift, I really like it closer to the floor, not really so much in the middle by your knees. And the squat's also uh, just a little bit lower than the mid-range, I'd say works best. It really depends on where your sticking point is and also where you have weaknesses and uh, what parts of the lift you really lack stability. And then finally, uh, the last thing that people skip when they should not is uh, static stretching post-workout. Uh, I have tons of videos covering this. You probably think I'm a broken record by now if you've been following me for any significant amount of time. That uh, static stretching post-workout, you know, all you really need to do is, you know, between two and three deep breaths. That's really all you need. You don't need to go crazy with it and overstretch the muscle. But pretty much when you do that after working out, it helps your body go into recovery mode sooner. And it also helps you build mobility in those stretched positions. That's all I have to say on the topic. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel for more. Uh, drop a comment down below as well. Uh, please leave a question. I am trying to get a longer form Q&A video going on. And I have no questions yet. So you can be the first person if you drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.